hugely powerful. Look at last year's numbers, look at last year's conversion rate, and present a forecast of what the uplift will be if you can start doing the audits now, get some winning tests before Black Friday because there is still some time, maybe doing some landing page tests. And when they see those dollars of what's possible, that um, that should tick the box and get the buy-in, the support for you to be able to go off and have the time and commitment and have yourself in that conversation. So when, that, when the business is looking at that Black Friday plan, there's like, what's happening with product? What's happening with marketing? What's happening with, with CRO? Oh, that's right. Hey, Experiment Nation. It's Tracy Laranjo. I am having a horrible hair day, but you know who isn't? My guest today, which is Elon Hurwitz. Elon, hello. Hey, Tracy. Good to be with you. We've done the sound check. I've had the coffee yeah. and we've done the most important thing. We've, we've done the hair check. So Yes, I think we did the we hair are. check. <laughs> now, um, fun fact, you are my favorite Australian optimizer of all time. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is great to hear. We are. <laughs> what a great I'm way to start. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> I, know that's not like just an saying official, that. I know that's like an official award. We just had the Olympics and now I think I just won the gold. I won the gold. Yes. Yeah. Tracy's favorite um, optimizer. So two things there. First is uh, you're the only Australian optimizer I know. <laughs> you don't mean to say that part. You don't mean to say that part. Okay. We'll just, whoop, that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, it's still, it's fact. It's factual. You are my favorite. But um, I hear Australians are also excellent break dancers. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're we pretty good. We're, we're, it's, oh, yeah. uh, we're well, <laughs> what's Australia known for in the Olympics? Swimming's pretty good. Yeah. Hockey, a few other, no, break dancing is now. Legendary. We are, we are on the global stage. Absolutely legendary. Um, on that note, thank you so much for sharing your, your brilliance <laughs> with us today. Do you want me to break dance? Do you want me to show that? <laughs> oh my God, that would be amazing. Uh, we'll, we'll save it for like Let, the yeah, yeah. YouTube Let's, shorts. Yeah. Yes. yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll, that would need to be heavily edited as well. Yes, of course. Well, I, I believe in your abilities, but seriously, thank you so much for joining and putting up with, uh, you know, all that is uh, Experiment Nation so far. How how are you doing these days? I hear you are a CRO consultant slash you own an agency. Tell me about that. You're living the dream. I am. I am. I um, am the lead consultant and founder of Clever Conversions. So we're a boutique CRO agency for e-commerce brands. They're doing all the standard stuff. Focusing really on audits always is where we start, but then uh, depending on what clients are looking for, looking at um, landing pages or running a B test program. So my background mainly in marketing actually for, for many years and worked with teams in CRO and towards the end of my time at a large company, did some CRO programs uh, and loved it. And so a few years ago, jumped out to start consulting for, for brands. And yeah, it's a really, really exciting space. Yes. You kind of, we, we both kind of did the same thing around the same yeah. time. Uh, I'm just way less ambitious. So good <laughs> on you for actually having a website and all of that good stuff. And I have noticed you have one of the most like, packageable audits, CRO audits ever. I love how it's packaged on your website. And I just, yeah, I'm really interested in kind of what you talk about. And I would love to ask you some burning questions about every optimizer's favorite time of year, Q4. Yep. Holy shit. It's coming up. It's coming. Uh, it's coming. The Olympics <laughs> of the year for anyone working yes, in e-commerce. Truly. I, I love the the connection. Um, what quarter are we in right now? This is well. <laughs> this is really what country are we in? What country? <laughs> actually, in Australia, weirdly, it's Q two. Our our year starts in the Ooh. middle of the year. Fun fact: uh, starts July first. But uh, yeah, for yes. for you guys, it is Q yeah Q three. February, March, April, May, June, July, yeah. August. We are in three. Yep. Yes, the beginning of Q three, Q two, Q three, Q three. Um, it's also, it's winter for you right now, isn't it? It is. That's right. Okay. Yep. That blows my mind because it is the hottest part of summer right now. So it's also a different day for you right now, which just really trips me up. 
like every time. I know, right? It's like we were saying the other day, it's like people experimenters, we do all these statistical analysis, we do all these like super complex complex things. And it's like, so what time is it? How do we, this meeting, yeah. which time, which date, Let's how do we make it work? <laughs> Yeah, time zones, not our thing, but that's okay. We have other talents. And speaking of talents, mm. uh, you seem to have a talent for surviving Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the holidays. I need to learn more about how to get this holiday started without losing my shit because it happens every <laughs> year. I freak out and I never make the most of the holiday period, especially when it comes to testing. Now, tell me you've noticed something different, but in my life, I've always kind of run into the issue of nobody wants to test uh, Mm because of the holidays. There's just so much going on. There are code freezes and it's almost like experimentation just halts completely. Yep. Yep. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Where do you stand on this? It is a good thing as we get closer to Black Friday. Okay. It is, it is, and that is, I think, when we spoke about what to talk about, it's, it's August now. People might be listening to this in September. And the key point is to do experimentation and help your business with CRO for Black Friday. Things need to start now. It yeah. feels far away, but actually the urgency to go through a proper CRA process from audit to testing and then implementation. It has to start now because as we get closer to the date, that window to try anything new, it, it's just going to close. There's, If you've ever led an e-commerce business or been on the marketing side or the warehouse side, it's not a time to try new things. Your business has to do two, three, four, five times as much with the same resources And so it just has to be about execution, high quality website, high quality experience, high quality delivery, all these emails going out. There is so much going on and business just can't afford to be trying anything new. So I think that's the challenge that we have in CRO and that's why now is such an important time to be planting the seeds and getting the buy-in to, to do the work in the next few months. And so you can really contribute to the success of Black Friday, which is, it is for most e-commerce businesses, a good Black Friday means you have a, a good year. A couple of numbers on how big this is last year in the States, $38 billion done over The Black Friday Mm -hmm. weekend, which Mm -hmm. during the peak hours was $16 million spent every minute. Hi, this is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. If you'd like to connect with hundreds of experimenters from around the world, consider joining our Slack channel. You can find the link in the description. Now back to the episode. Which is just, that just blows my mind. (laughs) Canada was seven and a half billion. Australia changed the currency, changing time zones, changing currencies in US dollars was 5.7 billion. So just crazy numbers but probably the key point is last year all these numbers grew year on year and it's going to happen again i think people talk about the economy and worrying about are people still spending and they are still spending especially during the holidays in fact they're spending more people are a bit more conscious about their money i guarantee you start having conversations with customers and they'll talk about i'm waiting for black friday so it's it's going to be Massive again, and experimenters and people working in CRO can play such a big role in helping their businesses be successful. Yeah, so much I want to touch upon there. But yes, uh, people buy crap all the time, all all year, buying crap. But I don't know, did you notice this too, where last year, right after Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's like there was just this massive hangover. Like nobody was buying stuff until right before the holidays and and through the holidays and then again huge hangover no one buying anything right after the holidays like is this a new thing was it just me who saw that like do you get that too just from the the agency okay so it's not just me i'm not crazy i mean i maybe i am but (laughs) not for this reason it's like around this time right after those peak periods especially in the agency and consulting world, it was just 
bombardment of messages from clients being like, help, my mm -hmm. website mm -hmm. conversion rate has absolutely tanked. Can you look into this? What's going on? And then you just see it across the board. So you're like, okay, it's not them. It's mm -hmm. something's going on here. So yeah. it sounds like you saw that as well. Yeah, and continue to see it this year as well after every big sales period. For example, our financial year ended end of June, which was quite big here. And yeah, big, big hangover. And I, th I think it just comes back to, we're talking about conversion rate on website, but conversion rate is also a factor of, of demand in the market. Yeah. And coming back that people are much more conscious with their money. They're not spending as much. And so they're waiting, they're spending on the big sales and then it's dropping off. And I think that's a really great point as part of this as well is um, as part of that planning and setting expectations that yeah. showing your so when people your business your clients ask about conversion rate because we get into this situation what's happening with the conversion rate and they just look at the yes. they just look at the total website conversion rate and we all know that's not very helpful at all that single yeah. number which yeah. In e-commerce, a lot of people are just looking at that Shopify dashboard. They're not even looking at GA4. And they just want this answer from someone working in CRO, like this magic bullet. It's, yes. not, it's just not that simple. And so it is part of this. And I know we're going to talk about this is looking at last year and looking at sales and setting those expectations so you're ready for those questions and saying, let's look at sales this year. Let's look at sales last year. Like this is natural natural ebbs and flows when sales yeah. run and so you're kind of ready for that that answer uh, and it's yeah. not perhaps not something to look at on the website of course yeah yeah oh, you're already giving us gems <laughs> it's like in part part of preparing for this is being able to set that expectation with yes. your team your client whomever and saying do not be scared if you're mm. noticing your your conversion weight will your conversion rate blah 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 do not be worried if your conversion rate absolutely tanks at, after this period. I think that's really helpful to take away and get everyone in the mindset. Mm -hmm. And one, before we get into kind of how we can prepare, I was always of the mindset kind of to what you said, you know, you don't want to do too much mm -hmm. in the way of testing during this period of Black Friday, Cyber Monday or holidays when there are a lot of promotions going on and it's very peak. But there's been a different perspective that I've been hearing more and more this year, which is, no, we should still be testing. We should still be doing what we're doing, just maybe shifting a bit, testing mm. more promotion-based tests, things mm. that are kind of, they make the most sense during discount-heavy periods. Mm -hmm. And usually the driving reason behind it is this is when clients churn. So this is more of a concern with agencies and mm -hmm. consultants. You know, your client is like, well, we're not doing testing. So like, what are we going to pay you for? Is it fair to say that even if you take the stance of not testing during Black Friday, Cyber Monday and the holidays, Q4, can you still prevent a client from churning by giving value in other ways? I love that question. Yes, you absolutely can. I think there's two ways you can do that. And as a CRO, working in CRO, you've got quite a unique skill set that can help other areas of the business. So one is analytics. And so we do a lot of analysis, which we're focused on the website, but we can provide some pretty interesting insights across the whole funnel, across marketing as well. Particularly since the move to GA4, a lot of businesses, uh, a lot of in-house e-commerce or marketing managers were comfortable getting insights from Universal Analytics and most e-com managers I speak to have given up. <laughs> Uh, and they just, it's become too hard. There's too much friction. There's not a lot of trust there. So that's one to start with. Absolutely. I think the other is getting, moving into more experimentation than traditional CROs. So we're saying don't do big AB tests on your website during the busiest time of year because there's a lot of risk there. But yes, absolutely. Let's experiment with, with offers with product placements and I've got a few ideas towards the end of the pod we can talk about, but I think 
that's the value there where you come up with these ideas to test for the website. And part of e-commerce, because it's product driven, the experiments can go into offers and offers for those products. And so I think you can help brands with thinking about, for example, an email offer and experimenting within email. You can help them think about, sure, we're not doing tests or we can just maybe test just how we do a headline differently around presenting an offer. So I think that they're the sorts of things that we can help businesses with, which aren't strictly uh, full website A-B tests. Yes. Love that you called out other channels that can benefit from the experimental mindset. And this specific period of time is one that really drives home the point that CRO is not just A-B testing. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that you can do and have to do beyond just 50-50 A-B split. And also on top of that, you can still experiment without A-B testing. So I find that, yeah, this time of year, the Q4 time of year is just, by the way, Q2 for Australians. But that whole time of year, that is especially true. Yeah, I agree. And also businesses are busy. They're so busy. So I think that's also your value as a consultant Mm. or an agency is we're going to go off and do that insights and analysis piece or just take the time because you're so busy focusing on getting your Black Friday right. So I think as well. But yeah, absolutely. There's so much you can experiment uh, and test across channels and help other areas of the business. Yes. Now, let's let's do this. What should you be doing instead? So I think the number one thing before you jump into the um, audit and testing process is getting buy-in from the business. You started this pod with number one challenge, I think, that we have, whether we're in-house CRO or an agency, is getting that buy-in because often with senior management or clients, top of mind is is product, (laughs) that Mm -hmm. brand and product um, for an e-commerce business. And what does that look like for Black Friday? Of course, marketing. They're the things that uh, email, website design, but not necessarily CRO. They're the sorts of things that are top of mind. And how do you get into that conversation and get the resources? That has to be the first thing before you even get into the work, knowing that you've got the time and the resources to help the business. And so the first thing I recommend is better speaking the language of key stakeholders and showing how powerful CRO can be during Black Friday. And it can be hugely powerful. Mm -hmm. Look at last year's numbers, look at last year's conversion rate and present a forecast of what the uplift will be if you can start doing the audits now, get some winning tests before Black Friday because there is still some time, maybe doing some landing page tests. And when they see those dollars of what's possible, that um, that should tick the box and get the buy-in, the support for you to be able to go off and have the time and commitment and have yourself in that conversation. So when, that, when the business is looking at their Black Friday plan, there's like, what's happening with product? What's happening with mm-hmm. marketing? What's happening with, with CRO? Oh, that's right. Trace and Elan, they're working on these tests. How are we going with that? How's the audit going? Um, I think that has to be that has to be number one. Um, and talking about it, not just in terms of the conversion uplift, but the things that matter to the business during that time. So one of the biggest challenges for businesses is moving away from discounting and remaining profitable. And so explaining how, of course, if we can increase the conversion rate and find some winning tests now, we're moving the business away from discounting to motivate the sale um, because we're presenting better headline, better user experience, whatever that, whatever that looks like, we're able to increase profit, which is probably a conversation which wasn't there a couple of years ago because I, Facebook ads were so cheap during lockdown like businesses were just making money and they didn't have to they did not have to you could have a pretty good a good enough website if you had a good product you were going to make money that's just not the case anymore costs are going up and so profit is part of the conversation now so showing not just conversion rate but profit per session or profit per customer talking in that language um, and how you can help the business achieve that so i think 
that yeah. has to be uh, that has to be the, the first step. Yeah, I love that. I love that you called that out. And it's like you have to go into it mm. already with a degree of trust because mm-hmm. it's going to be an uphill battle to try and get that trust for the first time yep. then. Mm. And I'm really curious to know from you, what does it actually look like when you have that buy-in? Because it's not always obvious. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it comes, it's, it's the resources. So explaining good... Sorry, I threw a curveball there. Uh, no, no, that that's a great question. I think it is getting this support across the whole business. It does come down to resources because you can sit there with all the analysis and all the ideas in the world, but you need to bridge the gap for the business to implementation and you can't do that on your own. There are resources, design resources, so... I think ultimately it just it depends on the size of the business but you want a senior stakeholder to say this is important to look around at the head of dev the head of design the head of product and saying CRO needs to be in that conversation I think that's the main thing in practical terms it is um, there might be funding there there might be things that you need to say in order for me for me to achieve this you have to get them excited you have to show the vision and the dream and then say for me to be able to do this this is what I need and this is how I want things to run and really get that ag- agreement from decision makers up front. And, and you might need to do a little bit of work if it's a bigger business here. So you might need to have a separate meeting with the design team because they care about UX and brand. They, they're not really going to respond to commercial. You might have yeah. to speak to the dev team because they do not want, they have going to be very risk averse and they need to make sure that the website is a well-oiled machine. So you need to maybe need to speak to each of those stakeholders individually to show how this helps them because it absolutely helps them in their areas. And so then when you are looking for that buy-in maybe from the CEO or whoever makes the decisions, they're looking around at all their reports and everyone's like, yep, we're we're bought in on this. And then ideally you also have I guess, a champion from each of those teams. So you might have got the buy-in from head of dev and then they kind of say, yeah, you know, Tracy and my team, Alana and my team, they're going to be your person to speak to as you want to roll out this roadmap. And I think it's helpful to get maybe a working group um, Mm -hmm. of people who almost make it feel exciting in a project. It's like, this is the, you know, have to come up with a name, but this is like the Black Friday, you know, Black Friday um, and then, of course, having a, a seat at the table for the actual Black Friday meetings, which are definitely going to be happening as well. Yeah. And everything that you're saying right now resonates so hard. I was just in one of these meetings, uh, these like Q4 planning prep mm, type mm. meetings where we brought in kind of all the department heads and we didn't just look forward to this mm-hmm. Q4, but we did a retrospective of the last Q4. Yes. We, everybody on the team had a different idea of what went well and what went wrong. And that's where you really start to see, oh, okay, so we can't make this same mistake over again. Uh, mm. Fulfillment mm. and stock issues, especially for yes. e-com, huge thing that came up this week when I was having that chat. So it almost kind of forces you to just, learn from the previous year Mm. and that's part of that's part of the Mm. the experimental mindset it's like you are every single year going on this new experiment of this is how we're doing black friday this year what are we learning Mm -hmm. from last Mm -hmm. year and it's an iteration every single time so so important to have those conversations and that's not even talking about the numbers really i Mm. i Mm. feel like Mm. you need to also look at how the website performed last year, but yes. also knowing that every year it's, it's different. I feel like every year yep. there's a new end of the world <laughs> coming up and yep. it's like, what can we take away from the performance of last year? That's that's such a good point. And I did speak about numbers because that's where more senior stakeholders are interested, but not all of them. Um, mm-hmm. 
You know, a CRO is we need to understand our audience, our customers. We need to understand our internal audience as well and what they're interested in and a lot of more interested in customer experience. And I think that retrospective, like (laughs) that business you spoke about. That's my favorite stakeholder. Yeah. (laughs) It's um, exactly right. At some meetings, at some businesses I've been in, we get someone to pretend to be a customer in the meeting and they have to, they have to kind of agitate and go, okay, I don't like that. Like, does this pass the customer test? It's like there's a customer sitting in the room just to bring it to life. And it's so true that follow-up customer experience, and so often it is logistics, is where things do fall over because it's just so busy. And so going back now, again, now is a time when you kind of have a bit of time and space to do that discovery before the pressure starts to build decisions have to be made about release dates, code freezes, placing stock. And it's just going to be a no, like we don't have time to sit and look at last year. We now need to just make decisions and move in. And um, I think there's a few ways to do that. I think absolutely looking at the results, um, looking at going into your analytics and looking what happened on the website. I'm a big fan of Anavi's intra-funnel report. I think going and looking at that last year because you can not you can look at this year's analytics, great, but to your point, Black Friday is like um, completely different. It's completely yeah. different. It's like its own special period. So you need to go back and look at the analytics last year because you're going to see yeah. all sorts of different things, all sorts of different things. People are browsing faster. They're getting through checkout faster. Like that might come up. Like did that happen? How did they move mm. between the site? was there specific Black Friday landing pages, like all those things are quite unique. So that's from the website's perspective. And then you need to look, yeah, I think um, at the um, experience overall and just looking at things like customer tickets, like customer service tickets and the number of chats, um, looking at the reviews that came through. And one of the big, big things, depending on the type of product uh, you sold is what was the lifetime value of those customers you got in Black Friday? It, it really depends on your unit economics and huge differences if you're maybe a subscription product um, at a repeat purchase, repeat use product. But yeah. have people just come in and purchase once or have they continued? And what did that look like in terms of the experience presented uh, yeah. during during Black Friday? Yeah. I it, Anytime we get into LTV, it's like I forget. <laughs> LTV yeah. is a thing, which yes. is so silly. It's, but it's true. It's I would like to know out of your customers who became customers for the first time last mm-hmm. year during the holidays, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, are they still customers? And if not, exactly. if the vast majority haven't spent a dime on your product since then, or they just immediately churned, then what can you learn from that? And what can you also learn from the ones who did become repeat customers? What are, the, what are those traits? what promotions encourage them to keep coming Mm -hmm. back and like discounting. I know there's like so many thoughts out there about discounting. Like, should we, uh, should we discourage it? Should we not? And that is, that is very important to think about, especially when you're looking at your customers who converted Mm -hmm. for the first time last year. Exactly, exactly. It could look so exciting seeing that big revenue and all those sales over Black Friday, but yes. depending on the type of business, uh, you might not be profitable on first purchase, which depending, it, that might be okay, but then you need to see people coming back. Yes. But looking back, you need to understand, did the way we do the sale, uh, did it just result in people come, just, it just got the deal, the deal hunters, it just got people yes. who were looking for something cheap and one-off um, yes. and that having too many of those um, types of customers is, is, does not make for a healthy, healthy p and I think um, wow. the other big part is doing surveys now as well mm-hmm. is, is huge. Um, yeah. Trying yeah, to well, go. What try- do you ask? Like, what do you try to learn? Yeah, I think I was thinking about the type of questions that I think it is trying to understand people's perhaps purchasing plan, just trying to ask about um, how they buying sales are they waiting for sales this could be more external research rather than than a post-purchase survey but it's also just doing your your standard surveys which are not always in in place again getting to that buy-in and saying to we need to to find out now to be able to come up with good ideas to 
to plan and test. So just making sure um, the standard survey after post-purchase, just asking about the experience, is there anything that we could, that prevented you from buying all those sorts of, yeah. of questions? I know for a lot of people listening, this is bread and butter stuff, but you'd be surprised if with so much going on in your business, if someone's actually thinking about or trying to find this sort of um, information from, from customers. Yeah. Voice of customer is a thing that I always notice uh, gets thrown to the side and, you know, you'll have one person who says, Oh, we uh, ran a survey six months ago. So that's, that's enough. And it was like exactly. the survey with 80 questions yep. and you learned absolutely nothing from. I One survey question that I would love to explore this year in Q4, since we're having show and tell now, I would love to find out what promotions have mm. you gone for in this past year? What promotions mm. made you act and kept you as a customer? What was mm. it about those promotions? Was it like a gift with purchase where, you know, you got like a trial size or a mini version of the product that you just loved and you couldn't stop buying? Or was it hard discounts? Like mm. what, what did work over the year and asking just really directly, tell me about an experience. Don't tell me what you would go for, yes. or what you would want. Like, what I have that. you acted yeah. on? Yeah, this is kind of the art of the survey is just, just yes. reframing that question to get, rather than prescribe the answer, get the ideas. And I, actually, I think that's a that's a great idea, actually, to throw into into the survey is uh, present testing offers now and asking customers. So either getting them to give you ideas or... Um, asking questions like, what else, if we had given you X, what else would have encouraged you to buy more? Mm -hmm. If if you purchased, you know, for subscription businesses, what um, discount or offer would encourage you to buy more and kind of getting those ideas on the table now so you have time yeah. to actually test and implement them. I think that's, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's also a gifting angle here too, because mm, so mm. much of what's purchased throughout this period of time is you're either gifting for someone else or you're putting together the list that you toss to your spouse and say, hey, Santa, uh, <laughs> I want this. There's got to be something there about asking about your gifting behaviors. Mm, mm. So, Black Friday is the 29th. So this year. So it is absolutely leading into prime Christmas gift purchasing. And it's always a challenge. I chat with clients like, how do we weave this messaging together? Because the challenge with Black Friday is the market's saturated. There's ads and messages everywhere. And so the instinct is to go for discount store wide. It just works. <laughs> I, 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 read, I read on yeah. you know, LinkedIn and things, people say you're discounting too much. I'm like, have you worked inside, working inside an e-commerce business? Like, of course, people know they don't want a discount, but it works and it's very simple to execute and we don't have unlimited resources and there's a lot going on in the business. And so, but you've got to try new things. We have to try and move away from that in some, in some form. So it's, yes. you've got your Black Friday messaging and then how do you, lead that in or make that feel part of the Christmas gift messaging. So you're saying, get your gifts now at a better price, something like that. And to your earlier point, avoid that hangover. Mm -hmm. And so you're really getting people are buying for themselves, but then they're spending and, and getting all these gifts for, um, totally. for Christmas as well. Totally. Totally. Is there anything else that you think kind of gets neglected? in preparation for Q4? Yeah, I think, um, I think there's a couple of other things that I would definitely be doing during this time. Uh, getting close to the product roadmap and the dev roadmap, just coming back to understand what else is going in the business. But in e-commerce, it's all about the product and the brand. And there's people in your business that speaking to the product leads um, and the merchandising leads, like what are we? what's our plan for Black Friday? Are we bringing in new SKUs? Understanding that is really important so you can present back a plan to help to help support that strategy, speed optimization is mm. a massive, 
massive one. How yeah. is the speed going? How did we go last year? It actually um, is a great way to get buy-in as well. It's very simple to explain to, to people. Um, our, our website's low, customer experience is not good, our conversion rate drops. And so you can kind of wrap it into your CRO plan. It's like, we need to do this. And by the way, we're going to also try all these tests. So it feels, you know, it just gets that, gets that buy-in. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, and the other one is just um, looking for new ideas at this time. And I just have to give a shout, shout out to ecomideas.com. That's been yes. a, a go-to resource of mine lately when I'm doing audits. And, um, you know, no one has all the ideas in the world. And you just want to throw clients something completely different, really get them thinking out the box. They want to see the latest best practice. Not Sorry, best practices. I saw this. <laughs> you said sorry, best the practice. BP I know, word. I know, I know. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so I think that that's one as well. I think it's just such a great um, resource just to get people thinking again. We can do discounts. How are we going to be different, different in Black Friday? Here's some things that we can try, and uh, it all comes back to those offers. So, and how do we uh, how do we come up with great offers which move away from discounting? So, I um, you asked me for for three, but I've, I've got five. So I think uh, I've got. <laughs> But I'm going to okay. rattle them off quickly Lay just to get people screen. thinking. I think, I think, how do we not discount? I think gift with purchase you mentioned is such a great one. Um, instead of discounting the product, you're just adding more value and you're yeah. still maintaining a higher price. Yeah. But that can be in many forms. It could be a product. But one of the, a great one is, is giving a gift card. Yeah. So $200, get a $50 gift card. You can kind of talk about, make it feel, explain 25% off the Customers very happy with their fifty dollars, and of course they're going to come yes. back. They need to spend yes. that fifty dollars, and and more often than not, they're going to they maybe spend more than the fifty dollars yes. because uh, they want to purchase a higher item, or they can gift it to someone. So yeah. get something for yourself, and here's your Christmas gift sorted. Okay. So gift with purchase is great. A uh, really um, so that's kind of gift with purchase and gift card, mm-hmm. uh, cross sell testing. Super, super powerful. I'm seeing a lot of success with post-purchase cross-sells. So if the business is worried about, just, just don't touch the funnel. <laughs> just keep it really clear. <laughs> We're going to sell these products on discounts. Let don't the customer, break just, yeah, don't break it. <laughs> keep it simple and, and seamless. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then after um, after the checkout, um, yeah, offer them something else, which you mm-hmm. secure the sale and like, can we increase the, the AOV? So that's such a great, such a great way to play around and test without, um, in a really low risk, risk way. Uh, trying to get people to sign up for subscription with a bigger discount if you um, are a subscription style. So instead of, yeah, just making it super attractive to sign up for a subscription up front and weighting your discounts that way. And then the I'm a final one, that, by the way. Yeah, like it's, it's a yeah. sick three month subscription offer. Yeah. If I love it after this three months, I, I'm hooked forever. This exactly. has happened with my yeah. my accounting software, my toothbrush and toothpaste yeah. subscription. <laughs> it's it's it can be so effective if you get it right. But you really got to believe in your product. You got to really bank you on. Yeah. You know, you yeah. you made that period great. Yeah, exactly. And you got to make it feel uh, like just really uh, remove the risk for customers, like put in that social proof, put in that money back guarantee because we're trying to get new customers. So yeah. if you can get new customers who haven't tried the product to sign up for a subscription on first product, uh, first purchase, that's like that's like pure gold. So you need to make it attractive price-wise, but then you need to make it feel that if you have to back your product, but um, the customer doesn't know yet, they haven't tried the product, so you need to try and remove that risk to get them to, to sign up to the subscription first. The final one, and this is more helping guide the business's strategies, product releases over uh, as part of Black Friday. So trying to work with the business to hold back some product um, so it's not mm. all Black Friday because you're trying to come up with these yeah. offers and keep things exciting. So instead of sending an email every two days and two hours, 25% off, 25% off. It's like 25% off store wide. And then on Sunday, it's like new release or um, we just yeah. found some stock, like make it feel fun. Like we just found like Tracy from the warehouse forgot about these 200 items. They are now on yeah. sale, like just keeping it really exciting um, and yes. planning out that calendar. Again, leading into to kind of Christmas messaging as well and maybe holding a bit of product back there to get them to give them a reason to come back and to come back to the site. Yes. I'm going to add one more thing here and it's kind of relevant to your last point. 
there's every year I see retailers do this thing where they'll increase the value of their promotion like every day mm. over like a one week mm. period. And I feel like shoppers are getting wise to this. Like they know, okay, you're giving me 10% off on day one, but I know that the discounts will get better and better yeah. and better every day. Maybe it's beneficial to take advantage before the stock clears, but mm. I think it's important to realize a lot of brands are doing the same thing as everyone else. And we're just, we're too smart as shoppers to fall for these I think things. So. Yeah. And I don't I love that. I think there's always this fine line with tactics that we use to yeah. encourage sales. And I feel a good customer experience. If you're willing to purchase from me on Black Friday, I think you should probably get the best discount. I understand we yes. extend I understand we can extend sales and I think there's a lot of great things you can do during Black Friday with countdown timers. I was gonna mention as well, like tweaking mm -hmm. your abandoned carts and talking Black mm -hmm. Friday and all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But I think coming back to it, like why should a customer who committed to buying from you on Friday get less of a discount to someone that committed buying on a Monday? So I think you're right. People are switched on to it. Um, but I think as well, it's being a little bit more creative um, with how you, you do your office so everyone, everyone wins. Totally. Now, for any of our listeners who are like, okay, uh, great advice. I'm still shedding my pants. I'm really scared for Q4 what would you tell them to kind of put them at ease? Take a big breath. Uh, planning is is key. Um, starting the conversation now, starting the conversation today um, when you go into work uh, and, and getting an understanding of the plan. I think um, that's that's got to be uh, number one. Um, I think that's the... <laughs> um, I'll try that one again. Um, is this more like an exit question or more like yes. just... Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah, yeah. Is, unless is there anything else that you, we haven't covered yet that you want to speak to? No, I think that's... No, okay. no I think Perfect. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think the number one thing is just to get started. I think get started. Um, trust your trust your process. Um, get that buy-in is, is number one. So you have the resource and the time to go through your process and, and start now because that window starts to close. Now it's, it doesn't feel urgent. I think that's the key point. Make yes. it feel urgent that we need to, we need to do X, Y, Z first to, to be successful for Black Friday and then going through that typical conversion audit, going through your analytics, going through your website and then just making yourself part of that, that team in the lead up, in the yes. lead up to, to Black Friday. Yes. Great advice. Usually I just say, uh, I don't know, deal with it at the last minute with everything else. But that is not the takeaway of this episode. So nobody take that as the the point from this episode. <laughs> Start now ASAP yep. and yep. you won't it's, regret it's, it. You have done it before. We've done it before. Black Friday is not new anymore. No. To be honest, most of what you're going to deal with is, is a known quantity yes. uh, you can look at last year you can speak to people there's ex experiment nation slack channel is amazing like there's so many people who've been through this so it's not like this new thing but there's different things for your business so like how do you connect those dots knowing that it's going to be crazy yeah and trying to yes. trying to walk through the scenarios and then go what do we need to do what do we need to do now is the time to to go through that absolutely well elon Thank you so much for all of this wisdom. I'm so glad that you joined. Where can our listeners find you? LinkedIn. I'm a regular on a regular <laughs> on uh, regular on LinkedIn. So uh, love love to chat all things CRO and and geek out. So um, yeah, please feel free to DM me if you have any questions. Always always love to have a chat. Amazing. Yes, and also check out your website, Clever Conversions. Yes dot com dot au yes that's the one yes excellent yes, i remembered yep. great i'm always yep. on your website because i'm like this is a a study in what i would want my website to look like if i had any sort of uh ambition or drive at all <laughs> thank, thank you that's great it's um it's been it's a lot of work like going from uh yeah freelance uh, to, to building out an yes. agency doing the website so thank you for that love it for you well 
thanks again. And best of luck to you in this upcoming Q2 for you, Q4 for me. Hi, this is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. If you'd like to connect with hundreds of experimenters from around the world, consider joining our Slack channel. You can find the link in the description. Now back to the episode.